TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. W Waco. I am your host, Debbie, here to help you get in the know about Waco. This week, we're going to be talking about the Casa Virtual 5K happening from September 25th to the 27th. This week, we have a special guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm Lucas Land. I'm the Director of Communication and Development for Casa of McLennan County. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about yourself and what brought you to Waco. Uh, wow. Well, originally I came to Waco um, for seminary, and then I stuck around for farming at uh, World Hunger Relief. Um, and then I was taken off to distant lands uh, a couple different times, but Waco has definitely become home for, for me and my family. Awesome. And how did you get involved with CASA? Yeah, well, most recently we were um, living and, and working in Bolivia, and, and when we knew that we were coming home, uh, partly because of the pandemic, we started looking for work, and I've worked in um, you know the school district and uh, love working with nonprofits, and CASA had this position open, and I, I love the mission of, of CASA and the work that they do, and so I was really happy um, to be offered a position working with them. Yeah, and how long have you been with them now? Uh, not very long. July 13th was when I when I started, um, so a little bit over two months, around two months. So. That's super exciting. Tell me a little bit about the organization. So CASA stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates, uh, and we work with abused and neglected children in McLennan County. Um, we provide volunteer advocates for the children um, as they're you know, dealing with a really traumatic time in life, um, we provide uh, training for volunteers who get to know them, spend time with them, and they do the work of gathering information on their case so that they can advocate for the best interest of the child uh, to the court. Yeah, and you already mentioned this, but what kind of volunteer opportunities do you have and what does it take to become a volunteer? Yeah, um, we always need more volunteers. Um, there are any given day around 700 kids in McLennan County that are in the foster care system, and we're able to serve around 230 of those kids. And so there's a gap between the, the kids that we're serving and the kids that need a CASA, and we would love for every kid to have a CASA. So um, CASAs are, uh, it's a great volunteer opportunity. Um, it's a little bit more than your average, uh, maybe, you know, weeding somewhere or doing some, some manual labor. It's a, a little bit of more of a commitment, but it's very rewarding, um, the difference that people can make um, in these kids' lives that are really um, having a difficult time. So if anybody's interested, um, we're also having a, a virtual CASA 101 informational session this month, uh, September 22nd. Um, you can find out about that on our Facebook um, or on our website and, or email me and uh, get signed up for that to find out more and, and get started on the process. Wow, that's super awesome. And what kind of things do you guys do for the Waco community? Like what specific activities, what kind of events, what kind of um, things your volunteers do for the children? Uh, yeah, so, so the volunteers, the advocates, um, they you know, some of it is just spending time with the kids, um, building a relationship with them so that they feel more stable and have, have someone in their life that's a little more stable at a, at a very unstable time. Um, and then they're also talking to all of the stakeholders in the child's life, um, teachers, doctors, um, the lawyers, the uh, biological family, foster family, all, you name it, anybody that's involved with that kid or, or those siblings. Um, our advocates are, are doing their best to get to know everyone and get to know as much information as possible so they can tell the judge what um, they think the best um, thing is for that, for that kid. Um, we, you know, we also do other fundraisers. Our big fundraiser is uh, usually in April. It's uh, Crawfish for Casa, and it's a great event. It's really fun. 
Uh, unfortunately, we had to cancel this year like so many people. Um, so we're hoping, fingers crossed, if everything uh, gets a little bit back to normal, we'll be able to do our, our crawfish fundraiser uh, in April. Um, this month, we're having the CASA 5K. Um, the Baylor Thetas always put on uh, a 5K and, and usually a concert. This year, they, they don't have a concert, but uh, the 5K is going to be virtual. And the great thing about it being virtual is that um, you can complete your 5K however you want. So we want people to get as creative as possible. Um, you know, I asked my son if he was going to do it with me. And he said, Dad, can I can I do it while I'm dreaming? <laughs> I said, I don't think so. But I guess, you know, if you put some wheels on a bed and somebody pulls you 3.1 miles, we'll count it, you know? Uh, we'd love for people to get creative and find ways that they can uh, complete a 5K. Um, and we're giving away a $100 Amazon gift card to whoever has the most creative entry. What do you think you're looking forward to the most to? I'm, I'm really excited to see what people come up with and, and what um, entries people have, uh, you know, whether it's costumes or just uh, different ways to complete it. Um, uh, you know, maybe somebody is into golf and they're going to do 3.1 miles of golfing. I don't know. You know, it could really, I, I love to see people's creativity, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, and how do they keep track of their miles? Uh, well, I mean, it's really on the honor system. Um, you go register with the on the site that uh, Baylor Theta has set up for the 5K. And then um, in order to enter for the giveaway, just tag um, a social media post with the hashtag ThetaCasa5K2020. And then we'll, we'll look at all those entries and then come up with, uh, with the winner. That's super awesome. And how do you think events like this can impact Waco overall? Yeah, I mean, we want to raise awareness, obviously, of the work that CASA does. We think it's uh, really important and, and want to get the community involved. It's, it's really something that um, affects our community, and, and we can also have a really positive impact on the com community by, by helping these kids and families um, going through a really tough time. Um, and then also, it's just, you know, right now, with everything going on, it gives people something fun to do. It's kind of been fun for me getting excited about the 5K and thinking about what how could people complete their 5K um, differently this year and in some kind of creative way? So break out your Pokemon costume a little early, <laughs> you know? Sounds super awesome. Speaking of everything that's going on, what would you guys like to do in the future? Well, um, yeah, we have uh, lots of plans. Uh, we're, we're continuing to grow. I mean, one of the things that's been really interesting is that even when things shut down, um, and, and CASA was kind of wondering what was going to happen, um, our cases didn't go down. Um, and we've also been able to keep up with volunteers and grow even during this time, which is fantastic. And I think it really speaks to the Waco community, um, being willing to help out, being willing to jump in and, and really um, do work to help um, others in their community. Um, right last year in October, we moved into our new offices um, on 5th and Colcord. Uh, it's an old Methodist church that was converted to uh, this new office space, and it's really great. And we have space for meetings and um, all kinds of things to use for, for cases and, and um, related to the work that CASA does. Unfortunately, we have been close to the public um, because of everything going on um, and haven't been able to use it as much as we like. But we're looking forward to being able to do that again and, and open up more to meetings and um things like that with our with our new office space. Yeah, and what are some other things that you expect to see from the community moving forward? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, Waco always uh, surprises me. I've, I've been uh, living in Waco long enough that I've gotten to see downtown change incredibly over the last, you know, decade or more. And, um, you know, I, I just look forward to uh, more of that growth and, and especially from the folks um, – who um, have been around Waco long enough to really love it for um, all of the all of the, what makes Waco Waco, you know, um, and have really um, I see a lot of people really uh, putting down roots and and finding ways to give back. And uh, one of the things that my favorite thing about Waco is it's it's like a big small town, and you can really get involved. Um, 
you know, I was on a, a city commission at one point, and it, it, it's not hard. If you show up and you care and you're passionate, um, there's lots of stuff to do in Waco, and you can get involved in ways you can't, you know, maybe in bigger cities like, like Austin or Dallas. And so it's, it, it makes a really great community, um, and, you know, it's one of the things I love about Waco. Yeah, you already covered this. Um, I was just going to ask, like, how do you think the growth of Waco has impacted CASA and impacted volunteers? Yeah, that's a great, you know, that's a great question. Um, It's great to see so many people getting interested in Waco. Um, I know everybody, you know, a lot of people have mixed feelings or, you know, have different thoughts about it. Um, But I I love people getting to see um, Waco and get to know Waco. Um, And I think, you know, of course, there are people kind of passing through for Magnolia or whatever, but there's a lot of people that are sticking around and getting to know the things that, you know, I really love about Waco. So I think it's helping um, bring more interest. Um, you know, it does bring in more dollars, and, you know, uh, we all wish that everything could be free, and I don't know, we live on some kind of barter economy, but, um, you know, money is, is necessary to make stuff happen, um, and that's why, you know, that's why we're doing the 5K. Uh, we've got to pay our bills, and and the more volunteers we get, the more cases that we can take on uh, as uh, CASA, it means more money that we need to be able to, to pay for all of those things. And so, um, you know, we're excited to see the community come out and support us for this fundraiser. Yeah, and I know you spoke about how many cases you have. How many volunteers do you guys currently have? Oh, that's a good question. This year, I think we have around... Um, just under a hundred um, advocates um, working on cases. We have seven staff that are um, advocate supervisors. So um, CASAs that are working with a case, they have somebody that's always got their back and is always there to help answer questions and stuff. So um, we've we've grown and added um, almost 60 new advocates this year. So it's, it's going really well. That's yeah. very impressive. And is there anything else that you would like to shout out or anyone else you would like to, uh, you know, give a little plug to? Uh, you know, just Baylor Thetas. They they do a lot of the heavy lifting, putting this on and putting it together. Um, and they do a lot of the work promoting it. And so we're just really thankful for partners like them um, who support us and continue to make it possible for us to, to do the work that we're doing. All right, of course. And then where can we find all your information and where can we find you guys at? Yeah, you can go to our website, um, casaforeverychild.org. Um, and then, of course, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, Casa McLennan, I think on most of the most social media. Um, that's Those are the best place to find us. Awesome. And we definitely want to see those pictures from the 5K of all those um, interesting submissions. So yeah. definitely tag them. Hopefully just go online and, and search that hashtag Theta Casa 5K2020 and, and see what, what people are up to. Wow, that's so exciting. Thank you again for coming. This was such a great interview. Thanks. It was really fun. Thank you for tuning into this week's podcast. This is your host, Debbie, signing off. Now that you know, go. Just go, Waco. This has been Rogue Media Network Podcast.